The Kids Aren't Okay, a Quotev story, narrated by Adam Snowflake. Olivia. I wanted to let you guys know that this story does contain fighting sequences, so assault and stuff like that is included. However, I will put a note at the top of a chapter that does include that activity, so if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, I advise you to skip that chapter. Thank you for reading. Olivia Swan's ballet school was just a few blocks away from her house. She woke up at four in the morning, since her morning routine takes a little time. It includes her daily skin care regiment, which Miss Ivanov and her mother take very seriously. The sky was still clouded with darkness, and the air was cold. Olivia slipped her pink Sennan ballet slippers into her bag. They were given to her by her mother, who was a famous ballerina who used to dance in Paris. However, she didn't envision herself doing the same, but she couldn't let down her mother by dropping out like any sane person would do if they hated what they were doing. She put a puffy white jacket over her pink leotard and tied her hair using a ribbon. Olivia slung her dance bag over her shoulder and stepped out of her house. The flowers and hedges that decorated their soft blue home certainly made it stand out. There were peones, daisy, tall wildflowers, and blushes of hydrangea littered the front. The house was squeezed between two other homes, so her neighbors could see her whenever she exited the house. Good morning, one of her neighbors called, petting one of her many cats. She smiled and waved at her. She didn't know the woman's name. But it seemed like everyone who came into contact with her chatty mother knew everything about her and her family. She tugged on her puffy coat, a futile attempt to make herself warmer. She could see her breath like a dragon's icy cloud coming from her. She usually stopped to admire the silence and the cold, but she was almost late, and being late didn't go over well with Miss Yanovov. Olivia picked up her pace, going faster and faster as her sneakers hit the concrete. The cold wind blew through her hair, and she had to close her brown eyes for a few seconds so that she wouldn't tear up. When she opened her eyes, she almost ran into a boy much taller than her. Watch where you're going, bitch, he growled at her. Even though it was dark, Olivia knew his eyes were a very odd mixture of green and blue. She was sure he was a part of one of the gangs around downtown, because of his lack of manners and his busted lip. She's never ran into one before, but she didn't need him stabbing her with a pocket knife. S sorry she stammered. She quickly ran away from him, not looking back. Her heart was beating fast. She had to calm herself down, breathing in and out. <sighs> the cold did calm her. She loved how it made her lungs feel icy. She slowed her pace and heard cars honking and other people shuffling to the subway on their way back to work. Olivia finally reached her ballet school, a large structure that could stand out anywhere. Its glass dome and large staircase leading up to the entrance was intimidating especially for newbies. But since Olivia was used to the building, she entered through the revolving doors. The stairs were made out of polished marble and statues that should be in a museum decorated the walls high above her. Ignoring the architectural beauty, Olivia checked in and took the elevator to her classroom. She quickly changed into her slippers and rushed into her practice room. The room was elegant Rococo style, with comfortable chairs and the end table so that some prestige audience can watch them practice. Three arched mirrors were clear and beautifully reflective and were placed on the walls. The other girls were already there, and unfortunately so was Miss Yanovov. The tall, lean woman with gray eyes and thin lips saw her in the entrance and frowned. You are late, Miss Swan. Do you have an excuse? No, ma'am, Olivia sighed. She quickly rushed to her position, near the bar behind another girl who was laughing with her friend about Olivia's tardiness. She felt the blood rush to her face as Miss Yanovov started counting the positions for warm-ups. You're never late, Olivia, her friend Marcia said. She was one of the most flexible girls in her class, but she was always put in the back because she was a little clumsy. Olivia thought she was the prettiest girl there. However, Marcia had copper skin and her curly hair was always tied up in two adorable buns. I just woke up a little late is all, she explained. Marcia laughed. That's not like you at all. Usually I'm the one who's late. That's because you wake up super late and then end up not catching the subway in time, <laughs> Olivia joked. Marcia leaned over and giggled, stretching out her calves. Olivia practiced her splits and glanced at an ash-brown-haired girl with large round glasses who was laughing with her friend earlier. She was glancing at Olivia, and they would giggle. That was Savannah Harper. She was always competing with Olivia for the solo parts, and so they have a bitter rivalry with each other. Her mother always trying to get them to be friends. But Olivia knew no matter how many hangouts she arranges between them, it's never going to happen. Don't let the Wicked Witch of the West get to you, Olivia, Marcia said, noticing her glaring at Savannah. Olivia rolled her eyes. I'm not, she protested. 
Marcia rolled her eyes too. Yes, you are. You're doing that one thing. What one thing? That one thing, Marcia repeated. She's just so irritating. What does she have against me? Olivia asked. You get all the solos, your mom is famous, and you get to have Elijah as a dance partner when, when we do duets with the boys. Olivia knew Elijah was Savannah's crush. He wasn't very tall, but he did have nice eyes and was strong enough to lift her up. So, it's not like I'm trying to steal her man or whatever, Olivia protested. She doesn't know that, Olivia. You have everything Savannah wants. That's why she's always trying to push your buttons. Just ignore her, Marcia suggested. Olivia sighed. <sighs> Marcia was wise and very empathetic when it came to conflicts like this. She analyzes each side of the equation and deduces how the other person feels when they look like the bad guy. Miss Yanovov clapped her hands and everyone stopped stretching to practice the routine. Practice is usually a few hours long and since Olivia hadn't had breakfast, she usually starving until break. Do you want to go with a few other girls and I to June's house? Marcia asked her during break. Her food is really good and what you eat there stays there. No thanks, Marcia. I'll just go to a cafe, Olivia said. Marcia shrugged and jogged off to join the other girls. During break, she often left the building to go to cafe downtown. She always orders a salad and a decaf coffee because if she was caught eating something that actually had calories, she'd never hear the end of it. So Olivia dug into her wallet and pulled out the usual $10 that cost her lunch. Olivia yawned and sat with her salad in a plastic clear container. She stabbed her black fork into it, piercing a few of the bland, tasting leafy greens. Olivia noticed a man wearing flannel and a rocking, a hipster look sitting at a table not too far from hers. She thought she saw him when she walked to the academy, but decided to shake it off. Olivia finished her salad and coffee, and she exited the cafe. She'd only passed an alley when large, rough hands grabbed her and pulled her in. Terrified, she tried to scream, but a towel doused in chloroform covered her mouth. The scent overwhelmed her head. It made her limbs weak, and her eyelids became heavier and heavier until the darkness consumed Olivia's vision, and the last thing she remembers is being carried into a dark fan. End of chapter one, Olivia. Link to the story in the description, The Kids Aren't Okay, by Marin Gyu on Quotev. Narrated by actor Adam Snowflake. Links to profile, story, and resume in the description down below.